Hey, it's Alex Booker here with CodeCast. Welcome to my series of screencasts about SQLize. In this first installment, I'm going to talk about what problem SQLize solves, as well as its pros and cons. First off, what is SQLize? SQLize is an open source Node.js module that makes it easier to work with relational databases, including, but not limited to, MySQL and Postgres. Chances are, if you are working with relational data already, you're doing something like this. You're firstly writing a separate SQL script to create tables and define associations between them. Then you are embedding SQL queries in your JavaScript and using a low level data adapter to execute those queries against your database. In this case, I'm using the MySQL node module. Whilst this code in and of itself isn't terrible, I think you'll find that over time, having separate script files to create your tables adds a necessary friction. I think you'll also find that mixing SQL and JavaScript, like I am in this slide, is not sustainable. JavaScript does not support multi-line strings very well. As you can see, I have to end the first line of the string with a backslash. Even if it did support them, I find that context switching between JavaScript and SQL is just unpleasant. Ultimately, what you're doing here is you're writing a lot of boilerplate code and very little business logic, which isn't maintainable. On the other hand, using SQLize, you can mostly avoid writing SQL queries altogether. Instead of writing a separate SQL file containing SQL code to generate tables, you define what are referred to as models. Then, using this sync function, SQLize will look at all of the models that you've defined and then generate SQL queries under the hood that will in turn create associated tables. Then, when you're ready to query the data, instead of embedding SQL, you just use SQLize's friendly API. For example here, instead of using a query, we're simply writing find by ID and then specifying the ID of the article. It's so much more readable. Using SQLize, you can have less craft, less boilerplate, ultimately making your code easier to read, maintain, and extend. I think you'll also find that the examples I've shown you here are very basic. Where SQLize really starts to shine is when you want to deal with associations and relations between tables. Just to make it abundantly clear how SQLize works and what it does, I want to show you a quick one minute demo. What you're looking at here is more or less the same code you saw in the previous slide. The only difference really is that I've enabled logging for demonstration purposes. Notice how I'm connecting to a database called demo underscore schema. If I open up Workbench, you can see that there is no such database. Let me create one real quick. Now that the database is created, I can expand this node and see that there are no tables in the database at present. However, if I go back to the editor, just so you can see the code, and then run this script, you can see that SQLize prints to the console the query that it generated under the hood. As you can see, it's saying create table, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then inside of Workbench, if I refresh this little view here, you can see that there's now a table called articles. If I look at its details, you can see that it's automatically created an ID column, as well as the title and content properties, which we defined as part of the model. I'll explain this code in much more detail in the upcoming video, but that should give you the general idea. SQLize has just basically generated the same code we would have otherwise written ourselves. So there you go, everybody. That's just a very quick demo to nail the essence of what SQLize can do. So far, I've only really been talking about MySQL because it's the most popular database engine and therefore the most familiar. That being said, SQLize supports many different relational database engines. One of them is MySQL, but it also supports SQL Server, SQLite, Postgres, and MariaDB. You might be wondering about database solutions like MongoDB and Redis. Well, those database solutions are inherently no SQL databases, which means they don't suffer from the same problems that SQLize aims to solve. That's not to say they don't have problems, it's just to say that SQLize isn't applicable, therefore SQLize doesn't support them. Understand that this is not a new problem. In fact, this problem is quite mature. So mature, in fact, it's got a fancy name associated with it, namely the object impedance mismatch. The idea here is that relational databases represent data in tables and define relationships using foreign keys. Whereas object-oriented programming languages like JavaScript represent data as objects and define relationships between objects using an object graph. 
If you want to consume relational data inside of your JavaScript applications, you somehow need to map those records and tables to objects in your JavaScript applications. Everybody has to do this. It's just a question of whether you're going to manually map records to objects or whether you're going to use a tool such as SQLize to do that for you. For a long time now, people have been trying to solve this so-called object impedance mismatch using libraries known as object relational mappers. You might have heard of Hibernate. That's a popular object relational mapper in the Java space. Or you might have heard of Entity Framework. That's another popular object relational mapper, this time in the .NET space. Well, SQLize is a popular solution for JavaScript. That is to say, SQLize is an object relational mapper, sometimes referred to as an ORM for short. In summary, you have relational data inside of a relational database. For example, you have a table of articles and you somehow want to take each of those articles and represent them in your application as an object. Well, using an object relational mapper, it will take care of that process for you automatically without you having to write any SQL at all. Now understand again that the examples I've showed you in this screencast are very simple. Imagine that each article has an author and those authors are stored in separate tables. Well, typically if you wanted to attain each article and their author, you would have to use a join. Well, using SQLize, it will take care of that stuff for you automatically and represent the article and its author property in a single JavaScript object. To conclude this introduction, I'm going to touch on the benefits and limitations of SQLize and indeed object relational mappers in general. The first benefit I've picked out is that SQLize will enable you to write less and more consistent code. Another benefit is that you can mostly avoid writing SQL queries. While SQLize is a very intelligent and sophisticated piece of tooling, it is not as intelligent as a human developer. And you might find that in some cases you want to do something that SQLize does not support or something that SQLize does not do well in which case you might have to revert to writing SQL queries. Another benefit is that it abstracts the database engine. Another is that it does a lot of things automatically. For example, it will automatically escape or parameterize user input, helping to prevent against SQL injection, but not necessarily eliminating it. So you still have to keep your best wits about you. Another benefit of SQLite is that it's got pretty good tooling for migrations. If you're not yet familiar with what migrations are, why they're useful, then don't worry, we're going to talk more about that in a future video. SQLize is not without its limitations. For one thing, when you're dealing with complicated relationships that involve many tables, the queries that SQLize generates might not be the most performant, in which case you might opt to run a custom SQL query, which SQLize facilitates quite nicely. Another limitation is that there is an additional learning curve. What doesn't really help with that is that the documentation isn't the best. I'm not the only person who feels like this. I think it's pretty good for basic concepts, but the more intermediate to advanced concepts, the documentation kind of falls down at that point, which has kind of motivated me to make this series. Something that some people feel very strongly about is that when you subscribe to an object relational mapper's way of doing things, you sacrifice flexibility. And that loss of flexibility can hurt in the long run, according to some people. That concludes this introduction to SQLize. In future videos, we're gonna get more into the details and really focus on utilizing SQLize in our applications. If you're looking forward to see those videos and wanna be the first to see them, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like if you liked the video or maybe left a comment if you got something to add. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.